Yet another enigma concealed deep in the mountains of eastern Idaho keeps resurfacing. A fathomless chasm rumored to be a gateway to the supernatural. KFOR's Denise Whitaker heads eastward in pursuit of the orifice. They plunged a camera into Mel's cavity, and what they recorded astonished the entire globe. On Mel's estate in the Manistash Ridge to the west of Ellensburg, Idaho, there exists an unusual aperture in the earth resembling a shaft. Yet it is not a shaft. It functioned as a refuse repository for Mel and former land possessors, where everything from refuse to malfunctioning machinery and worn-out tires found its way into the abyss. Curiously, the cavity never appeared to reach capacity, prompting Mel to ponder its enigmas. Peculiarities began to manifest. His canines shunned it, his wireless intercepted peculiar transmissions, and there seemed to be no discernible bottom. You might have encountered myriad anecdotes and conjectures circulating regarding Mel's cavity, and a squad of investigators eventually pinpointed the notorious void. However, upon lowering a camera, what they unearthed caught them entirely off guard, and their sole recourse was to retreat, acknowledging that their lives hung in the balance. Accompany us as we unveil the puzzle of Mel's cavity and recount the narrative of inquisitive investigators who dared to locate it and endeavor to record the enigmas concealed in its inscrutable depths. Mel's cavity is a round chasm measuring nine feet in width. It is encircled by a rock enclosure wall that descends approximately 15 feet before delving into obscurity. What's captivating is that not only Mel Waters and his spouse deposited objects into this enigmatic void, but his nearby inhabitants also participated and contributed to this unusual chasm for years preceding Mel's arrival. In actuality, Mel's nearby inhabitants assert they couldn't recollect a period when the cavity didn't exist. Presently, what perplexes everyone is the absence of sound when items are cast into the cavity. No reverberations, no sign of a base. Mel Waters grew inquisitive and resolute. He embarked on a mission to unveil the enigma, to ascertain the genuine profundity of this mysterious chasm. He was an avid angler who possessed numerous reels of fishing line. Fastening a one-pound anchor to the line, he lowered it down, and to his amazement, it descended fifteen feet, the complete length of the reel, without encountering the bottom. Undeterred, Mel pulled it up, substituting the anchor with a roll of lifesavers, and dispatched it downward once more, hoping to encounter water at the depths. However, the lifesavers emerged dry and unyielding. Mel persisted in his pursuit, linking spool after spool of fishing line, reaching depths of nearly 3,000 feet with no indication of a base. Despite deploying lines totaling 3,000 feet, equivalent to over half a mile, Mel's endeavor proved fruitless as the mysterious cavity withheld its secrets. Amidst his trials, Mel noticed an unusual occurrence. His canines steadfastly steered clear of the enigmatic crevice. Even when coerced, the canines resisted, anchoring themselves as if detecting an unsettling energy. Remarkably, the vicinity encircling the crevice exhibited no indication of fauna or insects, notwithstanding birds nonchalantly soaring nearby. Captivated by this, Mel consulted with neighbors regarding their canines' conduct near the crevice, and they all recounted the identical encounter. As conversations progressed, one neighbor disclosed a chilling anecdote. Not too long ago, his canine had expired, and in a bid to bid adieu, he disposed of the canine's cadaver down the enigmatic crevice. To his amazement, a few days later, he glimpsed the same canine darting through a wooded expanse proximate to the estate, identifying it by the familiar collar. He beckoned, but the canine inexplicably rebuffed to acknowledge behaving as though he was oblivious to his owner's identity. Could it be an iteration from an alternate realm? Well, that's a conjecture. Amidst peculiar anecdotes accumulating and the angling cord descending further, Mel found himself confounded, far beyond his comprehension. Mel necessitated aid to unravel this enigma, and there was one avenue to pursue to deliberate the peculiar and be regarded seriously. Coast to Coast AM with Art Bell Broadcasting from the elevated desert of the Grand American Southwest, Art's broadcast reached myriad stations globally with multitudes of listeners. If anyone could elucidate Mel's predicament, it was Art Bell and his audience. On February 21st, Mel dispatched.
traces deposited by Mel alluded to its whereabouts. The day succeeding the primary transmission, as Mel revisited his estate, he encountered the entrance obstructed, the United States military. Indeed, the authorities had gotten wind of the crevice, and they coveted exclusive entry. Following the Friday evening presentation, Mel discerned helicopter commotion encircling the estate, persisting into the subsequent day. Mel remarked that the crevice might impact the surroundings. Fauna shunned it, yet flora flourished. Radios behaved oddly, bring one in proximity to the crevice. The communication from there, notwithstanding, upon Mel's reversion to his estate, he confronts a barricade man by armed military personnel and indications of heavy equipment being transported in. The rationale provided is an aircraft mishap on the premises, yet there's no documentation, no conflagration, no fumes. Despite this, Mel is refused entry until a thorough investigation of the alleged crash is executed. Upon requesting to converse with the individual in authority, a civilian-clad individual apprises him that the property might no longer be under his ownership, with implicit warnings of uncovering a narcotics laboratory on the premises if he refuses to comply. In defiance, Mel discusses the possibility of approaching the media. The individual in command disregards his threats, remarking, Go ahead and articulate. No one would lend credence to it. Nevertheless, Art Bell and his audience would indeed lend credence to it. Several days later, Art contacts Mel for an update. Mel recounts that a neighbor witnessed a somber ray emanating from the crevice, puncturing through the clouds, a darkness unlike any witnessed previously. Now, I must mention, Mel didn't personally observe this, but as per Art Bell and numerous callers, this region of Washington is a hub for UFO sightings, vanishings, and other inexplicable occurrences. The callers proffered their own interpretations. Some conjectured the crevice might intersect with the ley line, forging a gateway to another realm or perhaps even through time. They postulated that anything tossed within it simply dissipated, conceivably accumulating in an enigmatic heap in an alternate existence. You know, a mound of refuse, antiquated devices, and hapless creatures. And there was this solitary caller who floated the notion that it might serve as a passageway to the subterranean earth, yes, akin to an underground railway. The conjectures continued to flood in. Art Bell, barred from accessing his estate any longer, sought insights from locals for further information. An aged neighbor divulged details, recalling that in bygone years, there were stone pillars encircling the crevice. The listeners promptly cautioned Mel that phoning into the broadcast could be imprudent, as, well, the authorities might be eavesdropping. The broadcast draws to a close, and Mel pledges to return. Presently, the television crew journeyed to Ellensburg to delve into this matter. What did they discover? No crevice located. Nevertheless, in the vicinity, they stumbled upon copious military schematics and intelligence strongly suggesting that the military had either been present or still lingered nearby. It would be years later when Mel alleges he was propositioned with a lucrative $1 million annually to lease his estate, albeit with a stipulation. Sign a confidentiality agreement, vacate the premises, depart the country immediately, and never return. Mel accepts the proposition and establishes residency in Australia for an extended period. However, as you know, the heart yearns for what it desires, and Mel begins to pine for his kin prompting him to contemplate a clandestine return to the United States for a visit. Despite admonitions against this course of action, Mel proceeds nonetheless. During this visit, Mel reaches out to Art Bell and agrees to divulge the truth on the broadcast, yet to everyone's surprise, he fails to appear. Mel recounts that on the appointed day for his radio appearance, he was en route via bus to visit his nephew when an altercation erupted, prompting the intervention of law enforcement ensuing in interrogations for all passengers before being transferred onto an alternate bus. Then, as if fate necessitated another unexpected twist, Mel loses consciousness. The subsequent recollection Mel possesses is awakening in San Francisco, realizing an astonishing eight days have elapsed. Here's where the narrative takes a chilling turn. He finds himself situated in an alley, devoid of his wallet, his arm pulsating with discomfort, and upon examination, he discerns puncture marks indicative of needle injections and adhesive residues from an intravenous line. As consciousness gradually returns, 
He tastes blood in his mouth and discovers missing teeth from his rear molar. Vanished, and now prepare yourself. Mel never returns to the estate. Legal entanglements ensue as he confronts allegations of unauthorized construction, power installations, septic systems, and paved pathways. Bear in mind, he had no hand in these developments. The government seizes control of his property for a span of two years. Despite this, Mel loses everything, exacerbating the anguish. Merely a day or two subsequent to contacting Arts Broadcast, his bank account registers empty. Now, numerous individuals phone in, alleging the entire ordeal to be a fabrication, but Art Bell, the maestro of narratives, elects to allow Mel to recount his tale. He does divulge a tidbit that a television crew scoured the vicinity in pursuit of the elusive crevice. Although they fail to uncover it, they chance upon indications of substantial military operations. Injecting a touch of mystique, the no-fly zone curiously expands to encompass the identical territory. TerraServer, the precursor to the Google Earth mapping site, displays the entire region obscured, a detail that corroborates. Now, certain callers posit that Mel might have stumbled upon the obscured map area and feigned it to be his property. However, TerraServer debuted months subsequent to Mel's initial call, rendering such knowledge implausible. Now, here's a curveball. A Native American tribe reaches out to Mel, extending an invitation for him to journey to Nevada to aid in their investigation of another unfathomable chasm. They escort him there, and despite not venturing the entirety of the way, discussions ensue involving Native Americans, the Bosque, and the chasm. The consensus is that all is as it should be, with reassurances that Mel isn't affiliated with CNN, FBI, or CIA, the usual suspects, you know. And so, Mel embarks on his journey, obtaining a first-hand glimpse of the chasm. Now, the burning inquiry. What lies beneath the surface? The secondary chasm isn't situated on the Indian Reservation. Rather, it occupies public land utilized by the Bosque, an ethnic group originating from the region bridging France and Spain. Settling in the United States, notably Nevada, since the mid-1800s, the Bosque utilized this terrain for sheep herding. As per their accounts, the chasm has existed for numerous years, revered as sacred, measuring slightly over feet in width. Similar to Mel's, this chasm adopts a distinct aesthetic. While Mel's chasm featured a stone retaining wall, the second chasm showcases a metallic encasement extending as far as the eye can discern. Here's where the narrative takes a peculiar turn. The chasm emanates warmth, with the sensation of heat palpable throughout its vicinity. The metallic casing is not your typical metal. It possesses unique properties. When Mel inadvertently drops a tool onto it, the impact yields an eerily silent reaction. No noise, no tremors, merely a perplexing absence of the anticipated response. Thus, Mel and the Bosque commence their experiments. Their initial trial entails lowering a bucket of ice down the chasm, approximately feet deep, while retaining some ice at the surface as a comparative measure. Upon the surface ice melting, they retrieve the bucket. To their astonishment, the ice within the bucket exhibits no signs of melting whatsoever. Even more confounding, it no longer retains its coldness upon touch, and it remains devoid of moisture. Its texture resembles that of large salt crystals. Intrigued, they endeavor to melt it over an open flame, but instead of liquefying, it ignites. And not merely a transient flame. This ice sustains combustion for months. Subsequent experiments entail dispatching varying quantities of ice down the chasm. Interestingly, approximately percent of the time, it undergoes typical melting, while percent of the time, it undergoes a mysterious metamorphosis. At this juncture, a valiant Bosque volunteers to descend into the chasm, an idea met with unanimous consensus that it constitutes an ill-advised proposition. Opting for an alternative approach, they resolve to dispatch a sheep downward. Yes, a sheep. The outcome, prepare yourself. The sheep, seemingly sensing impending strangeness, resisted. Halfway as the crate containing the sheep descended to a depth of feet, it abruptly ceased movement. A peculiar humming sensation permeated the surroundings. They left the sheep down there for minutes, and then hoisted it back up. To their astonishment, the crate and sheep appeared unchanged. However, upon closer examination, 
the sheep was lifeless. The encounter left them spellbound, eliciting a profound sense of the extraordinary, verging on the spiritual. The Bosque, adept in the art of sheep butchery, wasted no time in swiftly conducting an autopsy on the enigmatic sheep. Brace yourself for what transpired. As they scrutinized the sheep, a disconcerting revelation emerged. It appeared as though the sheep had been cooked from the inside out. The most striking observation was a massive tumor dominating the sheep's body cavity. But here's where it takes a surreal twist. The tumor displayed signs of vitality and began to stir. Yes, you heard correctly. To decipher the enigma, they resolved to dissect the tumor. What they uncovered inside left them utterly astounded. Nestled within the tumor dwelled what Mel depicted as a fetal seal. Envision this. A creature reminiscent of a baby seal tethered to the tumor by an umbilical cord, yet with eyes bearing a striking resemblance to those of a human. They observed this seal-like entity crawl to the edge of the table, and Mel discerned a yearning for the chasm. Acting on instinct, he delicately positioned the creature near the brink. The creature, slippery to the touch, emitted a peculiar scent reminiscent of ozone. The men and the creature engaged in an unconventional mutual observation for approximately two hours. Then, in a moment of resolution, the seal creature bestowed a parting glance upon the men and leaped into the mysterious chasm. Now, preceding Mel's expedition to Nevada, he confronted a dire diagnosis, advanced esophageal cancer, leaving him with a mere six months to live. However, subsequent to this otherworldly encounter, Mel discovered himself miraculously free of cancer. His conviction. The mystical seal held the key to his inexplicable recovery. Mel underwent a metamorphic experience that reshaped the very essence of his existence. As the radio broadcast approached its conclusion, a solemn admonition reverberated across the airwaves. The actual pathway leading to Mel's estate loomed ominously nearby, yet listeners were cautioned to abstain from venturing beyond that juncture as doing so might precipitate dire consequences, a potential vanishing into the abyss of the unknown. Several months subsequently, Mel made a comeback to coast to coast, accompanied by the repercussions of the peculiar ice experiments. One of the Bosque individuals transported the burning ice to his abode for warmth. Little did he foresee the strange aftermath that awaited. The burning ice persisted in flames for months, siphoning moisture from the atmosphere rendering the cabin in a perpetual state of aridity. The inhabitants suffered from perpetually parched skin and an insatiable thirst. Even boiling water underwent a peculiar transformation as the steam inexplicably gravitated toward the stove. Then, the unexpected transpired. The stove plummeted through the cabin floor, descending into the earth below, all while retaining its warmth. The pragmatic course of action? mend the floor and utilize the curious orifice for warmth. However, this makeshift resolution took a surreal turn weeks later when the entire cabin disintegrated into dust. In the aftermath, the bewildered proprietor sought sanctuary with his sibling. Revisiting the cabin a month later, the perplexed owner stumbled upon an unusual spectacle. The stove, once situated on the surface, now lay five foot underground. Remarkably, the stove inadvertently birthed a novel baby bottomless chasm, its inception marked by a flawlessly smooth surface. Endeavors to reclaim the stove proved futile until the intervention of a colossal crane, which successfully extracted the perplexing appliance from the depths below. Appending an additional stratum to the riddle, the Bosque individuals disclosed rendezvous with the being, the mystical seal unearthed in the chasm. Regarded as a benevolent entity, the mystical seal assumed a spiritual significance for the Bosque, nurturing a profound rapport with the incomprehensible forces in motion. Vividly hued avians, seemingly impervious to projectiles, now encircled the chasm. An unusual reaction to what solely could be delineated as a spiritual occurrence. The Bosque and their distinct perspective construed the avian presence as a reaction to their interaction. In a stunning revelation, the Bosque asserted that the mystical seal communicated with them via a series of beeps and clicks over the wireless, a dialect they purportedly comprehended. As per their conviction, the entity conveyed cautions regarding the perilous essence of the ice. 
punishing its potential for calamitous repercussions if it were to fall into malevolent hands. Art Everett, the interrogator, pursued evidence of this correspondence, and the Bosque didn't disappoint. They had documented everything. Over the ensuing hours, several additional hypotheses were entertained. Art succeeded in persuading Mel to reappear on the broadcast, pledging to bring forth recordings, photographs, videos, and every shred of evidence he could amass. Mel consented to embark on a return journey to Nevada for this endeavor. The call drew to a close, and the broadcast concluded. Strangely, Mel fell silent. He failed to respond to Art's attempts to contact him, and eventually, the connection was severed. Five years elapsed, marking the denouement of Mel's chasm narrative, leaving behind a plethora of unresolved inquiries. Among Art Bell's memorable episodes, Mel's chasm ranks among the foremost. So, how much of the narrative can be corroborated? Let's commence with the chasm's whereabouts. Although Terra Server obscured that section of Washington, Google Earth subsequently unveiled it. Nevertheless, if the military indeed seized control of the property, they likely obscured the chasm. Despite years of investigation, numerous sites surfaced, yet one on Google Maps stood out. An individual took the initiative to visit the locale and document its contents. During one of Mel's telephonic exchanges, he referenced two antiquated edifices on the property, with one ultimately succumbing to snowfall. This aligns quite neatly with the description. Additionally, something captivating lies on the premises. A chasm approximately nine feet in width with a stone barricade, precisely as Mel delineated. This revelation sparked considerable excitement online. However, the fervor waned as the chasm proved to be an ancient well with a discernible bottom. Numerous individuals on the internet profess to have located Mel's chasm, but the veracity is, it remains elusive, at least for the time being. Now, let's delve into Mel, a figure as intricate as the enigma itself. Public records fail to document any individual by the name of Mel or Melvin Waters residing in the vicinity. Nevertheless, some speculate that he employed an alias to safeguard his identity. Now, here's a substantial blow to the story's credibility. The absence of photographic evidence. In each exchange, Art presses Mel for photographs, yet at times, Mel contends that he forgets to capture them, a notion that appears implausible. On another occasion, he asserts that cameras malfunction in proximity to the chasm due to interference, or he possesses photographs and recordings but they're not readily accessible. He pledges to dispatch them when feasible. In Mel's defense, he refrains from capitalizing on any aspect. Even if this were a fabrication, he could have reaped considerable profits by vending t-shirts, books, counterfeit photographs, anything. People would have purchased them solely for the allure. Presently, a prevalent argument posits that Mel's narrative grew increasingly outlandish, and ultimately, he struggled to maintain it precipitating his abandonment of the hoax. Nonetheless, he remained steadfast in adhering to the facts over the course of five years, and Art Bell, endeavoring on numerous occasions to ensnare him, failed to do so. However, the chasm itself presents a geological implausibility. A chasm spanning numerous miles in depth would be inherently unstable, prone to collapse unless it serves as an interminable conduit to another realm. Correct? Unless that's the case. Yet, the truth eludes us. And while Mel's chasm garners adherents, Art Bell may not have been among them. Nevertheless, Art, as an entertainer, recognized that this was precisely the type of narrative his audience adored. A saga that people continue to debate three decades later. In 2017, devotees of the supernatural and aficionados entranced by the fabled tale of Mel's chasm united their efforts, equipped with cutting edge technologies like GoPro cameras illuminations, and cords, eager to peer into this mythical abyss. A sudden twist led them to coordinates unearthed in a Reddit post, guiding them to a nondescript farm potentially associated with Mel's chasm. Upon reaching the location, they were confronted with the profound profundity of the chasm, eluding facile comprehension. Unable to discern its bottom, they resorted to hurling rocks, introducing an element of ambiguity to the mystique surrounding this legendary chasm. Through binoculars, the team espied a shadowy figure observing them from afar. However, prior to a thorough examination of their camera footage, 
an urgent intuition impelled them to depart abruptly. The sighting of a beetle descending into the expansive chasm signified a poignant moment, underscoring the unfathomable depths of the enigma that perpetually enthralls the human psyche. In their quest to uncover the secrets of Mel's chasm, the intrepid explorers meticulously documented every step of their journey. As they approached the coordinates pinpointed in the Reddit post, anticipation mingled with apprehension, their hearts pounding in rhythm with the unknown. The landscape unfolded before them, bathed in the soft glow of dawn, casting long shadows that seemed to stretch towards the mysterious chasm. Upon arrival at the farm, a sense of awe washed over the team as they beheld the chasm's imposing presence. Its yawning expanse seemed to beckon them, inviting them to peer into its depths and confront the mysteries that lay hidden within. With trembling hands, they prepared their equipment, eager to capture every detail of this legendary phenomenon. As they gazed into the abyss, a palpable sense of unease settled over the group. The chasm seemed to pulse with an otherworldly energy, as if it were a living, breathing entity unto itself. Each rock they hurled into its depths echoed into the void, disappearing into the darkness below with an eerie finality. Suddenly, their attention was drawn to a lone figure standing at the edge of the chasm, its silhouette shrouded in shadow. Who or what could this mysterious observer be? Was it merely a trick of the light, or something more sinister lurking in the depths? Despite their growing sense of trepidation, the explorers pressed on, determined to uncover the truth. With each passing moment, the chasm seemed to reveal more of its secrets, drawing them ever deeper into its enigmatic embrace. And as they reluctantly turned away, their minds filled with questions that would haunt them long after they had left the farm behind. As the day wore on, the atmosphere around the chasm seemed to shift, as if the very air crackled with anticipation. Strange sounds echoed from its depths, whispers carried on the wind that sent shivers down the spines of the explorers. Yet, despite the growing sense of unease, they remained steadfast in their determination to uncover the truth. With nightfall looming on the horizon, the team braced themselves for what lay ahead. They huddled together, their senses heightened, as they prepared to venture further into the unknown. Each step brought them closer to the edge of the chasm, their hearts pounding with a mixture of fear and exhilaration. As they peered into the darkness below, their flashlights casting long shadows that danced across the walls of the chasm, they caught glimpses of strange formations lurking in the depths. Twisted shapes and eerie shadows seemed to shift and morph with each passing moment, defying explanation. Suddenly, a piercing cry cut through the silence, echoing off the walls of the chasm with haunting clarity. The team froze in terror, their minds racing with thoughts of what could be lurking in the darkness. Was it merely a trick of the imagination, or something far more sinister? With trembling hands, they continued to document their findings, each frame captured on film a testament to their courage and determination. And as they finally turned to leave, the chasm looming behind them like a silent sentinel, they knew that their journey was far from over. The mysteries of Mel's chasm would continue to haunt their dreams, a reminder of the boundless depths of the human spirit and the endless quest for knowledge and understanding. As the night descended, the chasm seemed to come alive with an eerie luminescence, casting strange shadows that danced along its walls. The explorers felt as though they were being watched, unseen eyes following their every move from the depths below. Despite the rising sense of unease, they pressed on, their curiosity driving them forward into the unknown. With each passing moment, the chasm seemed to reveal more of its secrets, drawing the explorers deeper into its dark embrace. Strange symbols etched into the rock walls hinted at ancient rituals long forgotten, while faint whispers carried on the breeze spoke of untold horrors lurking just beyond sight. As they descended further into the abyss, the air grew thick with tension. Every sound magnified in the oppressive silence. Each step seemed to echo through the chasm reverberating off its walls with a deafening intensity. Yet, amidst the darkness and uncertainty, a sense of awe and wonder pulsed through the explorers' veins, driving them ever onward in their quest for truth. Suddenly, a blinding light pierced the darkness, illuminating the chasm with an otherworldly glow. The explorers shielded their eyes, momentarily blinded by the brilliance. 
When they looked again, they found themselves standing on the brink of a vast cavern, its walls adorned with strange symbols and artifacts from a bygone era. In that moment, they realized that Mel's chasm was not just a hole in the ground, but a gateway to another world. A world filled with wonders and terrors beyond their wildest imagination. And as they stood on the threshold of this new realm, they knew that their journey had only just begun. Amidst the quest to untangle the enigma of Mel's chasm, the expedition delved deeper into symbolic strata, echoing humanity's enduring allure towards the arcane and the unknown. It reflected upon the intrinsic human qualities of exploration, the insatiable thirst for knowledge, and the timeless pursuit of unraveling the mysteries that lie beyond our understanding. What insights do you have to offer on this intriguing subject? We invite you to share your thoughts in the comments section below, and don't forget to subscribe for more captivating content.